Good morning, dear colleagues. Um, I decided to uh, change the traditional way of doing the presentations here and doing the opening speeches and uh, to talk about the issue that we are discussing today here in a bit different way. The title of the presentation has three words, the invisibles. I would like you to keep this uh, uh, title in your mind as we go through a couple of slides which I have prepared. There are only six of them, so ideally this will not last more than uh, 15 minutes, but um, let's see if I can keep the time. So, the invisible enemy, the invisible damage, and the invisible numbers. Uh, the reason why I have chosen these particular three phrases is to describe to you what Kosovo, uh, the European region, but also the entire planet uh, has been facing uh, for the last 50, 60 years and only now we are trying to see something that basically we couldn't see 70 years ago. Before going to, into discussing what basically NCDs are and how they impact our life, and of course you all know, in most cases, how dangerous they are. Um, I would like to show you four exhibits. Let's imagine that we are somewhere in a investigation center or maybe in an auction and you would like to buy something or you would like to sell something. And so I would like to show you the first exhibit. Uh, those of you who are working in microbiology or in the labs might be aware of what it is and I'll reveal later what it is, but just to let you know that this particular virus claimed last year almost 4 million lives globally. The second exhibit is another beauty. So this particular virus last year claimed more than 600,000 lives globally. In one year, more than half a million people died because of this virus. The third exhibit is this beauty. Globally, this particular one claimed almost 130,000 lives. Clearly, these are our enemies. We see them quite nicely. We know them well. We take a blood sample. We take uh, uh, any other sample. We put it under the, the microscope and voila. We know what they are. We study them and relatively quickly we will know how either to treat them or to manage them. Just to give you into perspective, so the first one is uh, the, of course, uh, coronavirus, the second one is uh, HIV, and the third one is uh, measles. Uh, known viruses for the last 40, 50 years, and uh, we have advanced quite well in how either treating or managing these diseases. And they are the enemy that we know, we see it. Now we go to the fourth exhibit. And you would be wondering, okay, so I clicked two times on the clicker, so there should be an image. Well, the only image that you can see, and I'm not sure if you can actually see from the distance, is a square with a blue frame. Well, this enemy caused last year 41 million deaths globally. We're not talking about tens of thousands, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands, we're not even talking about a million, we are talking about 41 million people dying from this invisible enemy. And the invisible enemy surprisingly looks much more attractive than the previous viruses. Very colorful, uh, very nice, uh, very concrete. And of course I'm talking here about the non-communicable diseases. Uh, from the WHO side, we are extremely happy to see that Kosovo uh, has joined the global movement to tackle these diseases, recognizing that despite being a young nation and despite having such a young population, Kosovo recognizes that these diseases don't tackle only the older population. They equally tackle the younger population through various factors that I will mention later. So, what is the fourth exhibit? Of course, the non communicable diseases, we all know, but how do they look? Can we put a picture? No. We know what causes HIV, we've seen the virus. We know what causes uh, measles, we've seen the virus, and we know what causes 
the COVID-19, it's, it's, it's the virus. We've seen it, so, and they don't look pretty, right? So let's see how the NCDs that cause, the, the, the things that cause NCD look. Well, the first one is a very nice picture from the Asian uh, subcontinent, and those of you who study uh, chemistry would definitely know that this is the formula of nicotine. On the picture it looks nice, in the black and white it looks pretty simple. Quite easy to understand. The second picture has a combination of something that was probably we all indulge ourselves when we want to have something nice. It's alcohol and sugar. Also very colorful picture, looks nice, very inviting to try it. And of course, each of us at one point in time has tried either a mix of both or at least one of those things. And the third one, uh, which most probably uh, will be quite nice if those of you who are following the pop show would know the song by Rihanna, Diamonds, Diamonds. Well, this looks very nice. Uh, also quite straightforward. Uh, simple, not too flawed. Salt. The salt that we all have been taking quite irresponsibly and uh, we think that, oh, if we don't take the salt by putting it into our food, then we limit our salt's intake. Well, absolutely not. Salt is basically in everywhere and in everything we can consume. So, going forward, the three numbers. Uh, the colleague from the Swiss Embassy already mentioned that, and I will try to put them in a context for the global movement, but also what it means for Kosovo. Uh, three numbers that I would like you to keep in mind as we go through these three days. 74% that what NCDs claim globally. It's not non-communicable diseases, it's three quarters of the population globally die or will die from non-communicable diseases. That means that 17 million people will die before the age of 70. And okay, what is 17 million? Uh, the population of uh, the Earth is currently what? Around 7 million people. So 17 million out of 7 billion may sound like a number that the world can, should, will, may tolerate. However, if you put it into the perspective of a daily count or hourly counts or count per second, that means that every two seconds, every two seconds, somebody in the world dies from an uncommunicable disease. I don't know how long I've been speaking now, but if you time and if you do some math, most probably we are looking at approximately a thousand people having died since I started talking about this. And what is worse is that almost 90% of the people who die globally of the NCDs, they are in the low and middle income countries, including Kosovo. So people in Kosovo are not dying because of communicable diseases, they are dying because of the diseases which can be easily prevented. Now, these are the numbers that also the colleague from the Swiss Embassy talked, basically how these diseases are distributed, and we know now the enemy, we have the numbers, we have the science, we have the knowledge. That means that 80% of the people who could have survived will die because of one of these four conditions. The conditions that are relatively easy to manage, but even more than that, they're even relatively easier to prevent. Now, does it mean that it's the end of the world? Of course, this is not the message that I would like to convey, and there's a hope for us everywhere. I remember when COVID started and everybody was thinking, okay, so this is now going to be something different, the world is not going to be the same the way it is, and three years later, we see that the world is not the same, but at the same time, the world is the same. So what do we have for the NCDs? Well, here we actually have to understand what the risks are for us and what the solutions are for us. And over the course of the next three days, looking at the agenda, I see that the colleagues have prepared excellent presentations to address these risks, to understand what kills the people in Kosovo, but also what the authorities what the organizations such as WHO, such as UNICEF, UNFPA, all other our partners, but also what the developmental partners, and most importantly, what we as individuals, whether we are doctors, whether we are patients, whether we are teachers, 
whether we are mothers, fathers, sisters, or brothers, what we can do to ensure that those numbers don't continue to grow. So, from the perspective of uh, the risks that we are dealing, there are three types of risks. Risks that you can modify, basically the things that you can control. Risks which relate to how your body behaves, again, and you can control. And risks which influence where you live, basically also what you can control by changing the lifestyle. The solutions are actually quite simple. Uh, surprisingly, they are not created in laboratories. They are not created in highly sophisticated biological centers or in the microbiology labs. They are created among the leaders, among the professionals, and among the people. WHO offers to the world several solutions. One of them is what we call the best buys. And uh, my colleagues will be mentioning during these uh, two days what they are for any country in the world, regardless whether its GDP is counted in billions of dollars or whether its GDP is counted in thousands of dollars, to actually design the interventions which can help to eradicate and to control those conditions which are caused by non-communicable diseases. The four things which we can do and which are in our powers as individuals and also as professionals is to try to detect, to screen, to treat and to care when it's a bit too late, particularly for the palliative care and for the people who are in the terminal stage of the cancer. What we can all do is what we call the population-based interventions. I will not go into the details, but these are the interventions which all of us can engage into to address how we live and how the way we live impacts our life. Of course, it's all about how we interact with the government. So it's not only the Ministry of Health, it's not only WHO, it goes across the sectors. And let's not forget that the cheapest, the best, and the fastest way to prevent or to manage any uncommunicable disease is within your family doctor, is at the primary health care level. So, to end, I would like to give you two numbers, and I think the colleagues from the World Bank that are present here uh, will perhaps have an opportunity also to reflect a bit, because at the end of the day, nothing speaks louder to us than money. As much as it sounds maybe mercantilistic, but it is about the investment and the development. So, how much one dollar that we invest into MCD prevention and management will give us in return? Normally, if you go to a bank and if you deposit 1,000 euro, uh, the return would be 1% maximum, maybe 2%. If you get 3%, wow, you're lucky, you should not only play the watcher. Well, the investment into MCD will give you 700% return. So one dollar that you give to the NCD management and prevention is 700% return in the improved living of conditions that goes back into the economy. That's one of the best returns that you can have on the dollar spent in addition to the investment that we do into the immunization campaigns uh, in any country. And if we don't invest, if we say that, oh well, you know, and CDs is a problem of the people and of the way that they choose their live because they decide what they eat. Of course, it's not. It's not that they decide to eat unhealthy. It's what they have and their choice because of the economic condition. Or people decide to smoke because they want to smoke. No, because it's the aggressive marketing. It's the, what we call the commercial determinants of, of NCDs, the pushing from the industry. And so if you ignore NCDs, and largely, unfortunately, the world has been ignoring NCDs, that's what it's going to cost to the entire global economy by the end of the 2030. 30 trillion dollars. I can't imagine how much it is in cash, but I did some research and if you have 100 dollar bills and if you put all those 100 dollar bills, that will be approximately two tons, sorry, two tons the weight of paper. And that's the loss of the global economy. The last thing which I would like to conclude, and this is in relating particularly to one factor which is very, very critical for the NCDs in Kosovo, and that's tobacco. I can tell you a lot about how dangerous it is, how harmful it is, you shouldn't be smoking, tobacco is basically throwing your money out of the pocket, I won't say that. 
I will only ask you for five seconds of your attention, either now or during the coffee break, to turn your head to the left and to see you to this banner, which is the second from the right, the tobacco body. If you smoke and if you want to know how you look like inside, that's how you look like inside. For Kosovo, this is the biggest killer. For Kosovo, this is the biggest driver. But that's the area where we can make the biggest impact. Individually, if you want to look like that, well, of course, that's your choice. But I think we all want to look much, much better. So please remember that NCDs is not the curse. It's something that we can manage, something that we can prevent collectively, but also individually. NCDs are beatable. It starts with us. Thank you.